Colbert. I'm a teaching artist for Meta Arts, a nonprofit arts organization in TWISP. Today we're going to be doing a lesson called Color as Emotion. For this lesson, you will need a piece of paper, your watercolor paint set and brush, and then colored pencils and crayons or any other coloring materials you have. And for your paint set, you will need your cup of water and a little paper towel to dab up extra water. So. Right, today we're going to be looking at a couple paintings from Pablo Picasso's Blue Period. There were a few years in Pablo Picasso's life where he only painted in shades of blue. So we're going to take a look at those paintings and see how the color blue affects the feeling that comes off of the painting. Pablo Picasso was born in Spain in 1881, but he lived most of his life in France where he worked as an artist. So his blue period was a period of his life when he was having a pretty hard time. He had lost a close friend of his and he was having trouble with money and people not wanting to buy his paintings. And so the blue color palette of his paintings reflects kind of his sad feelings during that time. So the first painting we're going to look at is a self-portrait by Picasso. Now if you look at the self-portrait, think about what feeling does it give you? Does this seem like a really joyful portrait or an angry portrait? And then think about what about the painting makes you feel that way. So to me, his self-portrait looks very serious, partly because he's not smiling. And it also looks pretty sad. And that to me is partly because of the blue colors and the dark colors he's wearing. Um, just gives off this overall sad feeling to it. So the next painting we're going to look at is called The Old Guitarist. And this is another painting from his blue period. So you'll see it's mainly shainted, painted in shades of blue or blue-green like the guitar. And it, this painting also has a very sad feel to it. Partly it's kind of an old man and he's hunched over so the body posture gives off a little bit of a dejected feel. But the color palette also adds to that. So take a moment now to picture this painting if it was painted in bright pinks and yellows. How might that change the way this painting feels? So Pablo Picasso used the color blue to express sadness. And blues often expresses sadness. Have you ever heard of the blues? Like the music? That was used to express sadness. Or even if you just say, oh, I'm feeling kind of blue today, that often means that you're feeling a little bit sad. So today we're going to um, think about color as emotion and look at some different colors as well and think about what emotions they might express. So go ahead and close your eyes. I want you to think of a time that you were really angry. And it's totally okay to be angry, right? And we all feel angry sometimes. So think about a time when you were angry. Think about what happened and how you were feeling. And then think about what color might you associate with that feeling. So for me, anger feels kind of hot, like maybe one of our warm colors, like red. Um, but you might have a different feeling about, or a different color to express that feeling. Okay, so keep your eyes closed. And now I want you to think of a time that you felt really happy. Think about what was happening and how that feeling felt inside you. What things make you happy? And how does that feeling look inside of you? So if you close your eyes and think about happiness, what do you see? What color feels like happiness? So for me, I think happiness also feels like a warm color, but not as hot as um, as anger. So maybe yellow, but I could also see a different color, like maybe someone feels like blue is really calm and happy. Um, so colors can mean different things to different people. Just like f expressions or emotions can feel different to different people as well. Okay, now we're going to make some artwork based on emotions. 
So think of a time that you felt a really strong emotion. It could be sadness, it could be happiness, it could be anger, jealousy, it uh, could be feeling really nervous about something. And think about what color would you associate with that feeling. And then we're going to get started making our artwork based on that emotion and that time that you felt that really strong emotion. Great, so now that you have your emotion and the color that you associate with it, go ahead and pull out all of your coloring utensils that are that color. So here I've pulled out some different shades of blue colored pencil, um, a blue crayon, and then if I had markers, I could use blue markers. Um, I'm going to be doing blue for sadness. So that's what I chose. But if you're doing red or yellow, just find all the coloring utensils you have in that color and just get them laid out next to your um, paintbrush palette. Great. So we're going to be doing a very simple self-portrait in the color of the emotion that you chose. So for me, I'll be doing a very simple self-portrait in blue to express a time that I felt really sad. Um, so I'm picking sadness because I often struggle with feeling really sad. Um, so it helps me if I make art about feeling sad. It can help me kind of understand why I feel sad or what might help me feel better or not sad. And it's totally okay to feel sad sometimes. So, um, so it's good to feel sad and to understand that feeling sad is okay. All right, so I'm going to start with my um, colored pencils and crayons. I'm just going to do a very simple self-portrait. So I'm just going to draw kind of an oval for my head or a circle. And it can be loose. It, this does not have to be a perfect, um, you know, one line picture. This can have lots of different lines because this is about expressing emotion. And so the marks that you make and the way that you move your pencil can also help express that. Um, maybe I'll give myself a little neck and some shoulders. And then I'll do, just add in some very simple eyes and a mouth and a nose and some hair. So go ahead and take a couple minutes to just um, draw in a very simple self-portrait. And think about the way that your face might look or feel when you're feeling that emotion. So if I'm feeling, drawing about sadness, then I probably don't want to draw a smiling face. Um, so I'll just think about kind of how does it feel when I feel really sad and I'll draw that. So first I'm going to draw my eyes um, and I think I'm going to have my eyes closed because uh, when I feel sad I think I feel very much stuck inside of myself and so it's like I'm looking inward when I'm sad. Um, so I'm just going to have my eyes closed. So go ahead and draw your eyes however you think they, sh they should look, feeling that emotion. Uh, and then I'll just draw some sort of nose. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. And then think about your mouth when you're feeling an emotion. So maybe if you're scared your mouth is open because you're yelling or maybe your mouth is smiling. Um, I think I'm going to draw my mouth kind of small and straight line. Um, when I'm feeling sad, I often feel kind of small and don't really feel like talking very much. And so I'll have my mouth closed. Great. So now for the hair or and other um, drawing we're going to add, this can be a little bit more creative. So you can think about what, like what type of hair would someone who's really angry have? So sometimes if I'm really angry, I think my hair would stand on end, maybe. <laughs> or if I'm really happy, I might have like flowing hair. Um, and I think for s feeling sad, I think I'm going to draw kind of like straight heavy hair because I just, when I feel sad, I feel like something's weighing me down. So I'm going to draw kind of heavy, just and see I'm kind of using, I'm pushing pretty hard on the pencil because I want my hair to feel heavy and sad. So just think about your emotion that you chose and what marks would feel like that emotion and what type of hair maybe feels like that emotion. 
And you can also switch, so maybe I'll add in some, some of my colored pencil and different shades of blue as well. Great. So now we have our kind of basic self-portrait drawn in. I'm going to use some colored pencils or crayons to add designs or patterns into this drawing that express sadness to me. Um, so it could just be some marks that I make like this kind of feels like kind of feels like rain to me which is sometimes related to sadness. Um, or you might, you know, if you're feeling angry, think about what shapes or patterns relate to anger and you can fill it in in the background or you can go right over your drawing. So I might just add in some marks kind of right over my self-portrait and maybe might add in some circles. So this is all just about thinking about the emotion that you're trying to express and then putting that emotion into, um, into a visual form. And, you know, when I'm doing this, I can feel kind of through my whole hand and my arm, my whole hand and arm are thinking about sadness. So the way that I move the pencil is even trying to express sadness right now or whatever emotion you've picked. Great, so now we've added in some patterns and lines and marks with our pencils and crayons that help express the emotion that we're feeling. And all of our marks should be in some sort of shade of the color that we chose. So mine, I chose blue to represent sadness, so all of my marks are in blue. So the last step we're going to do is we're going to add in some watercolor over our drawing here. Um, and so you can use different shades of the color that you chose. So if I chose, I chose blue, I can do um, blue, kind of like this, or I could make kind of a purple blue by mixing either blue and purple or blue and red will give me a purple blue. Or I can do kind of a green blue by mixing blue and yellow or the blue and the green that the, comes on your palette. So you can do different shades of blue or the color that you chose um, and just layer it over what you have. And as we're doing this, you can think about different types of brush strokes again. So my brush strokes, I don't have to just color it all in. I can still think about, okay, I'm going to think about sad brush strokes. What does it feel like to have a sad brush stroke? Um, and for me, a sad brush stroke feels kind of slow, like maybe slower than a normal brush stroke. Um, it might feel, let's see, what else does a sad brush stroke feel like? Might have different areas, like maybe some smooth areas and then some rougher areas, if we're thinking about texture. Maybe a little area here I'll make feel a little bit like rain or tears, which I relate to sadness. So go ahead and use your watercolor on your drawing in a way that relates to the emotion that you chose. Great, so now we've added in a um, watercolor over our drawing in the color of the emotion that we chose and using marks that represent the emotion or that give off the feeling of the emotion. So this is my uh, simple self-portrait of sadness using the color blue. 
Great. So today we talked about the way that color can express emotions and also the way that color can help us understand our own emotions. So um, emotions can be a really complicated and challenging thing. Like sometimes I'll feel really angry and not really understand why or how to express myself. And artwork can help me understand better what it means to feel a certain emotion and how to express that. So color can be used as a tool to help us understand ourselves better. So thanks for joining me today. Hope you enjoyed the lesson and I look forward to seeing you next week.